welcome to a deeply unqualified tutorial on programming and mixing drums. I think a deeply unqualified tutorial on how to produce drums is an appropriate name for this video uh, because I want to couch a couple of things here at the outset. Uh, one is I am not a drummer. I am not remotely a drummer. Uh, and number two is that I am also generally not a competent keys player. Um, I would not consider myself to be remotely proficient uh, when I am doing scoring work uh, or programming in drums. I use a variety of shortcuts and MIDI cheats and all sorts of things to kind of speed up my workflow and to accomplish more complicated tasks than I am otherwise capable of. However, necessity is the mother of all invention and I got to a point in writing music for this channel and in my own life that necessitated the need for competent drums in my projects uh, without actually having access to a real drummer or a real drummer with a real drum kit. So I put together a very, very quick and effective workflow that I don't think necessarily creates album release ready drums necessarily, but intensely competent drums that I think sound great for what they are and for the purpose that they are trying to serve here on this channel on Instagram and in kind of demo writing, both in terms of uh, gear demos on the channel as well as demoing out songs for real releases down the road. And to that end, this video exists predominantly because I have gotten so many questions on this topic. I get more questions about how I produce my drums than I do almost anything else on Instagram or here on YouTube uh, over the last six months or so. So despite me not being a professional in any sense of the word in this capacity, uh, I actually think that might actually make this an incredibly useful video for the people asking because I have to assume that most of the people asking me for this video or asking me questions that will be addressed in this video uh, are inquiries on behalf of people who are similar to me, not, not hyper proficient keys players and or drummers in any sense of the word. And to those of you watching this video who are in that similar boat, or maybe you are a more competent keys player or a real drummer, but just are looking for a way to get ideas down on paper effectively. That's also a big deal for me and one of the things that I want to kind of explain in this video. Uh, I have a more robust and complicated drum mixing process that I use when I'm doing outside work. If I'm working with a real drummer sending me stems, that kind of thing. Uh, I have a Pro Tools workflow that involves multi-out uh, mixing from contact and or actually mixing with all of the individual drum stems themselves. But the purpose of this video is to show you how I got, get out of my own way, how I get the workflow streamlined to the extent that I, all I really have to do is get creative and start writing. I don't wanna be spending all of my time trying to fine tune things when the drums are ultimately not the end goal of what I'm working on. What I'm really working on is getting a song written. I can fine tune the rest of it down the road, but this is about getting a a relatively finished sounding product from the sound in my head to a final product fast. And so I'm gonna walk you through how I do that in this video. We're going to break it up into essentially four parts. Part number one is going to be how I set up my MIDI controller for programming drums. Part two is going to be how I set up my actual drum library in my DAW uh, and what kind of drum samples I use as kind of my pre-mixing starting place. Part three is going to be how I mix drums in context, what plugins I use, how I level things, uh, how I use bus, like kind of parallel compression and bus compression and that kind of thing. And part four is kind of gonna be the final closing thoughts on writing drums, creativity, and getting started, not just with the sounds themselves, but how to implement them well. So we're gonna start things off by looking at the actual MIDI keyboard and how I set it up. Before we get into that, I wanna kinda of let you know right at the outset here, the drums we are using in all of this are going to be Get Good Drums Modern and Massive Pack. Get Good Drums does not know I'm making this video. It is not sponsored by them. I am not being compensated or paid or endorsed in any capacity by them for this. Uh, I actually paid full price for Modern and Massive. Uh, so there's no amount of that going 
going on here. I have worked with them a little bit since then. I have received a couple other plugins from them for free in the intervening months between buying Modern and Massive and now, but those products are not actually making an appearance in this video. Uh, and like I said, this is not something that is, is in any way a brand deal with them or anyone else. This is just kind of a video I really kind of feel like I wanted to make. So first things first, let's talk about how I set up my keyboard to record drums. Uh, we are using a Launch Key Mark III in this video. It's what I use for 100% of my drum programming and kind of all my programming these days. I'm gonna put a, a link down below to an Amazon link if you wanna pick one up. It's gonna be an affiliate link for my channel, so it will help me out if you do click that link and check it out or buy it or anything like that. Uh, I am a big fan of this keyboard. I just, I think that it is a really easy workflow for this kind of thing. And you will see why in just a second. So let's get into it. So let's talk about how I set up the keyboard for programming drums. Uh, we've got our uh, drums automatically mini mapped uh, according to Get Good Drums uh, across all the keys. Everything you got, you got your whole, your whole kit here. Um, I generally leave all of my symbols on the black and white keys. Uh, with some strike tape along the top to let me know where specific uh, instruments or inflections or whatever are. Uh, and the rationale for that is I record my drums separately from my cymbals because it's just, it's easier for me to kind of like divide and conquer like that. Um, and my hi-hat and my cymbal parts are generally a little bit more straightforward, you know, it'll be like... Or like... That kind of thing, really straightforward, easy uh, stuff. It's the kick snare patterns, the tom fills, that stuff that gets a little bit more intricate. And that stuff's a lot tougher for me to kind of like play uh, effectively and quickly on the black and white keys. And so what I do is I reassign them up here. Uh, the way that I do that is on the launch key uh, series keyboards, you've got these different uh, like versions of these pads that you can pull up, including scale chords, there is a drum thing, but it's mapped for Ableton drums, which is not where we're working. We're in uh, Universal Audio Luna, uh, Luna. And so what I instead use is user chords. You go shift, user chord. And what that allows you to do is select any combination of keys you want at once and assign it to a pad. So what I did instead of kind of assigning, you know, it's meant for full chords. So you can kind of like have like a big two hand chord and still play your like melodies by pulling up only one chord at a or like by pulling up chords with, with like a single uh, single press. For me, what I do instead is I just map is I just map all of my like essential drum pieces up here with that. Uh, and the nice thing is you can also do some more intricate stuff with that. But for me, the nice thing at the outset there is the ability to just very quickly do this kind of thing. It's straightforward, it's super easy. Uh, the, the, the really close together cluster also makes it really easy for me to do just like, you know, fun go-tos. Everyone's got their kind of like go-to riffs and go-to drum fills, so you can do like that. That kind of stuff, which is awesome. Um, but you can also, like I said, do clusters instead of just a single thing. So say I want my, my rim shot and my snare, uh, but I don't wanna be doing like, What you can do instead, grab that, that snare and that, that rim shot, and instead maybe go over here and assign both of those. So now I have both. Or you could even do like a, like a washi open hi-hat and your snare, and now you've got like a So you've got your kick and your snare and your hi-hat mapped to one thing here. So, and it's really easy to kind of clear stuff out if you're not using it anymore, which is really helpful for just being able to kind of quickly go. Say I want that like flammed. I could literally just go. And I've got two times. 
toms and two toms, and then like my kick snare. Yeah, it's 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 a very kind of like cost effective in terms of my time way to have all this stuff set up. I always know where all my essential drum sounds are, and then I've got all my cymbals uh, for all the different like little inflections. Uh, along the way over on my actual keyboard. So next up, let's talk about the actual drums themselves. Um, Get Good Drums, uh, which is, like I said, the company that I'm using for all of my drums these days. Uh, they have One Kit Wonders, which is a really great plug and play. There are no frills. There are no uh, auditioning different kicks or different snares or different cymbals. But Modern Massive does give you some pre-configured kits as well as uh, the ability to kind of like pick and choose your own set of pieces to build your own drum kit. And so uh, let's take a look at the stock kit. What was my go-to factory kit for a long time and the kit I am currently using. So let's start by talking about what drums I'm actually using. Uh, so in any session, I've got my, my instrument right here. Uh, like I said, we're working in Luna, as you can tell. Uh, I'll open up an instantiation of contact, pull up uh, the modern and massive, and this is the default kit which already sounds really, really good. But what I have is a, uh, where, where am I? My Marks kit. So this is just a slightly modified, uh, I've, got the, I've got a lot of the room mics pulled down because I like doing some of my own room reverb, that kind of thing. We'll get into the mixing stuff in a little bit here. But uh, this, is, this is my kit. For those of you trying to like, I guess, fully emulate what I'm doing here for whatever reason, uh, it is the Pearlmaster Birch 12 by 8 Rack Tom. Where you have to bear with me. My computer is going to be slow because I'm also screen recording and I'm on an old, an old MacBook. So uh, a Patreon plug right there so I can, so I can afford a better computer. Um, Birch 22 by 16 Pearlmasters. Uh, Pearlmasters Birch 16 by 16 Floor Tom. But then we still have our Q Drum Steel uh, second second floor tom and then a nice deep yamaha style kind of almost like a black beauty kind of thing uh snare drum i like a good deep snare so what that's going to sound like versus what you just heard with the uh with the stock kit is going to be But here's the thing. So I have my own custom kind of like arrangement that I've set up here. But if you go to the factory stuff and go to like the pop punk dream, which is basically the same kit as mine, but uh, with a different mix, different uh, turbo levels and a different snare, uh, you, you're already like 90% of the, the, the way there. It sounds great. Like that's a great sounding kit. And like, if you did nothing to your drums after that, it'd be pretty acceptable. Um, however, I think there are ways to pull more out of it. So let's jump over to our mix template instead. And before we do that, it's worth mentioning that like, I'm pretty sure Modern and Massive was like 80 bucks or something like that. Like this is not an expensive investment to get great drum sounds. I, I feel like I talked to so many musicians throughout the weeks and months that I've been doing this, uh, who are kind of like toying around with other drum uh, groove generators and that kind of thing that I just don't ever think sound particularly great. I'm sure that they're set up to be produced well, to be able to be produced well, if you can kind of spend the time and energy and you understand how to mix drums. But if you're looking for a really fast, efficient way to get ideas down on page that is good enough to share, the Get Good Drums Modern and Massive stuff is phenomenal. Starting off with great drum sounds like that is as important as getting your amp dialed before you start recording because you can just get so much more mileage out of the right sounds at the outset and you will fight less with plugins to make things sit well in a mix and sound correct for the genre or sound you're looking for if you get that stuff dialed ahead of time like we just discussed. 
talking on the mixing side, uh, we're going to be using just a very small handful of plugins and we're going to be working in Universal Audio's Luna for all of this. The rationale for that is, like I said, it is all about streamlining the workflow for me. Um, Multi-out mixing in Pro Tools or in Logic or any other reasonable DAW that supports multi-out Universal Audio, please get on this, I'm begging you, is pretty essential in my mind for getting a great final kind of very high polished finished product. However, uh, the right plugins can really go a long way even in stereo mixing on our drums. In this part of the video, we're going to be using three key plugins to mix our drums and to kind of imbue them with a bigger sense of gravity and life. Uh, number one is going to be uh, Sound Toys Devil Lock Deluxe. And that is going to be a plugin based on an old Shure brick wall limiter that can really create a larger than life, highly energized, very smashed drum sound. Uh, plugin number two is going to be Universal Audio's API 2500 bus compressor. It's one of my go-to compressors across all facets of mixing. I use it in master buses, I use it on guitar buses, I use it on drum buses. And in this particular situation, we are using it to really smash down drums before we go into plugin number three, which is going to be Valhalla Vintage Verb, which is my favorite studio reverb plugin anyone has ever made ever. And it's $50, which means why are you using any other reverb plugins? Valhalla is the greatest. Uh, just go, go buy their stuff. Uh, non-affiliate link in, in the description down below. I don't get anything from that. I just think that Valhalla is great. So uh, let's walk through the in-context mixing process for my drums. So what you probably can't see here is that we are running uh, Luna, Console, and OBS all at the same time to try to capture everything. So things might be a little janky. Bear with me if some of the audio for this part is a little bit off, but I think it'll get to kind of the core of what we're trying to, to illustrate here. So here we are in our mix environment right now. Uh, I've already produced all of my guitar tracks, and so they're frozen in place to reduce CPU load. Uh, let's jump over to our, uh, our, our mixing environment like this. You can see kind of like what plugins we have across everything for all of our guitar tracks. Uh, and then over here, we have our, our drums. So we're mostly gonna sit in this area. We have contact up top. We don't have any tape emulation on the drums themselves, um, but we've got our main drum here, which is going to two currently muted buses. Let's listen to the dry drums by themselves. As we talked about earlier, they are set up as, uh, as my kind of like custom kit that I like. Uh, you've got your kick and your snare mixes if, in case you wanted to pause and take a look at any of kind of how I have these like room mics set up and everything. Generally though, for kick and snare stuff, I will actually bring them down even a hair more than this. Uh, and let's give it a listen. We've got the rest of the mix muted right now. So let's give just this drum pattern a quick listen. So sounds pretty good. Um, like it's great starting drums right there. However, if you bring in everything else, if we like unmute the rest of the mix, uh, you can hear that we're losing uh, a fairly important amount of our uh, of our stuff. We're not getting all of our drum bigness uh, in context with all the guitars and everything. It tends to get a little bit washed out. So uh, what I like to do to solve for that is a couple of things. I keep my cymbals pretty low uh, in the mix, and that's because I feel like it can get a little washy. The Giga Drums cymbal stuff, I think, can be a little underwhelming when you're like at full velocity. Um, but so where I generally start is I start by creating a secondary uh, drum bus right here that sends 
uh, to the, let me pull it down from up top. This is the Devil Lock from uh, Sound Toys, and I I really dig it. So let's give a quick listen to, oh, uh, let's just say really quick, we've got Mix at 10. We've got a little bit of darkness to kind of roll off some of the otherwise extra sizzle you get from your cymbals, uh, because we're sending just a stereo send of everything into this, not multi-outing. Uh, and that's because Luna doesn't support multi-out at this point. Uh, and then we've got some crunch and some crush. So let's mute and let's give it a listen. Let's mute the rest of that band really quick and listen to with and without that devil lock. And that's also incredibly useful for that verse pattern as well. So like if we jump up to our verse here and give that a with and without listen. Yeah, so that's that's the devil lock there. And then the other piece of it is really just some additional reverb. You've got obviously room mics in the uh, in the get good drums set up by themselves. But what I tend to like to do is grab a uh, a, a universal audio API twenty five hundred bus compressor uh, set to just kind of their drum room smash uh, uh, preset on here which will sound like this. Let's go ahead and bring in just that API and kind of like AB it. So you can hear just kind of like how much smashing actually comes through with it. And then from there, all we have to do is drop in my beloved Valhalla Vintage Verb, uh, a dirty plate setting that I really, really like on drums. We'll, we'll leave it nice and high right now so you can kind of really hear what it's doing. But generally, we use the combination of that heavy, heavy compression into that verb to get a very even reverb response across everything. Uh, and I generally bury it in the mix a little bit. So let's give that a listen. I mean, that's kind of it. I mean, for me, there are times where I will kind of like do a little bit of extra work on it. I'll add some parallel compression. I'll introduce some other stuff. And it's worth noting, if I fly all of this MIDI information right here for my drums over to something like uh, Logic or Pro Tools, I can actually export all of the individual drum tracks as audio files back into Luna where I can mix them individually, which will actually let me get a lot farther and a lot into a place where I'm a lot more happy with kind of like how fine-tuned my drums are. But I think the bigger thing here is uh, 
I kind of always just want to be in a position where I'm showcasing what's the quickest and most effective way to get a good sound so you can just kind of like get out of your own way and write the music you want to write. Like I said, everything about this tutorial kind of shows how I have set everything up to be as frictionless as possible. How to get competent, great sounding drums, to get from zero to competent and polished as fast as humanly possible, to get out of my own way and just be able to focus on writing. Drums are an essential part of basically all music, but especially if you are a guitar player writing guitar genre music, uh, the context that drums create for massive rock and roll guitar sounds, big soaring leads, chugging rhythm guitar parts, all that stuff is so anemic without the important context of a great drum sound. And the goal here is to kind of show you how to create that for yourself, even if you are not somebody with that skill set. But knowing how to get those drum sounds is one thing. Knowing what to do with them is an entirely different beast. So my advice is twofold. Uh, thing number one is start simple. If you kind of go back on this page and look at my music over the past year and a half or so, uh, you will notice that for a long time when I started incorporating drums into my songs on this channel, that it was for a long time just four on the floor, simple kick patterns, like a very bass level, super simple, no frills drum pattern. And that was because complicated drums only work when they are imbued with nuance, and intentionality and taste. Uh, complex for the sake of complex and complex from a perspective of not understanding what makes complicated drum parts good is not going to sound good. It's not going to sit well in a mix and it's going to pull you out of the writing process and it's going to pull the listener out of the enjoyment of your music if you overcomplicate your drums and don't understand the whys of those flourishes and those embellishments. So start simple and kind of work up from there. Uh, advice 1.5 here is don't forget to quantize. You don't have to go hardcore, everything is exactly perfectly on grid. Luna and a million other DAWs out there will give you kind of an amount you can quantize or you can keep, leave a little bit of that humanization in there uh, to make it sound less robotic. But trust me, uh, if you like me are not a competent keys player or a real drummer, err on the side of quantized because the way that a real competent drummer embellishes and kind of moves on and off click is going to feel a lot better than the way that you and I playing keys badly into our DAW is going to. So lean on that quantization, get your notes in the right place, trust me on that. And my second key piece of advice here is steal. Seriously, go find artists you love listen to the songs that energize you, that connect with you, and that kind of give you those larger than life drum moments and just rip them off. Don't rip off the whole song and don't claim it's yours, but take those drum parts and attempt to recreate them for yourself in the process of playing it in for yourself, in the process of adapting it for the song that you are writing, it will take on a life of its own. And more importantly, it will give you inspiration. It will, it will make your brain start creating these new neural pathways that kind of go, oh, that kick and snare pattern is an option I just never considered before. Oh, I hadn't thought about marrying that hi-hat triplet thing to this kick pattern, this kick and snare pattern I already knew and loved. Those little things will give you the tools to write your own drum parts with more and more complexity and more and more nuance as time goes on. But start simple and then just start pulling all of your favorite ideas from your favorite artists. So yeah, I hope you found this helpful. I hope that this was something that inspires you to change up your writing game, to level up your home recording process. If you use any of these tools and post the music that you write with it here on, uh, here on YouTube or on Instagram or anywhere else, please tag me. I would love to hear what you're working on with some of this stuff. So thanks so much for watching and until next time.